What's good? What's good, everybody, man? Just wanted to come to you guys real quick. Your boy looking a little rough today, but about to head out. Go knock out these mounds. Uh, starting to do some of my transitional stuff. Retirement's coming around the corner. It's things of that nature. But with that being said, uh, I wanted to talk about this Dion situation, man. Um, about Dion transferring and going through the portal. And... Um, a lot of people have had their opinions. I'm going to actually read something from you guys from um, Gary Chambers, who's actually like running for office out there in Baton Rouge or New Orleans, one of those areas. Uh, what he wrote wasn't bad. Um, but the thing I want to talk about is just I would never understand why we continue to want people to take less to improve for our race. Let me say that again. Why do we want people to take less to improve for our race? So a lot of people are complaining about, you know, Dion came to the SWAC. He's um, won back-to-back -back SWAC championships. You know, uh, he had all these African-American kids uh, coming to the SWAC, which if you really look at his commitment class, I mean, most of these kids were there or he didn't get, it's not like he went out and got every top, 25 player in the, in the nation you know he did get the number one uh athlete in the nation which has had a great season at uh, jackson state with that being said he just got ex he just accepted the job to colorado and i am extremely happy for Dion because what we're not talking about is that we need to understand that we continue to say that we want doors opened for african-american coaches and this is how it happens um, a lot of people keep missing the interviews that Dion is talking about. You know, there was like over five, five or more African American coaches fired from uh, NCAA football this year, and Dion was like one of the only black coaches to replace another black coach at Colorado. And to me, that is making moves. That is making changes in the world. That is improving how we are now looking at coaching candidates. But one of the things that people have to understand as well is that Dion ran the ladder, man. He coached his boys all the way through elementary, through middle school, to high school, to college. Now he's taking them to Colorado with him. And I don't understand what's wrong with that because what's going to happen is what Dion is showing the world is it's about how you run an organization, not where your organization is in the conference yet. Jackson State only improved because of the structure that Dion brought to that program. Let me say that again. Jackson State only won because of the structure they brought into that program. There's a lot of great black athletes in the SWAC. If they were under the tutelage of Dion Sanders, we'll be hearing their name everywhere, all on TV, breaking SWAC records. And it's all about structure. And that's what Dion brings to the team. He brings structure. And it's very unique to me that we are pretty much saying, I have seen one person post that this is like another Will Smith slap in the face uh, to the swag. No, it's not. Um, if you paid attention to all the interviews, Dion is leaving that program to another ex-NFL player, a great friend of his, TC, who's going to be running the program at Jackson State. And what this should show you guys is you already have Hugh Jackson at Grambling. And the same thing is going to happen for Hugh Jackson if he turns that turns around the Grambling program. If he starts becoming dominated in, dominating in the uh, SWAC, Hugh Jackson is going to leave and go to the NFL. Or he's going to go to a D1, big D1 college. It's going to happen. But the only way to be gatekeepers of something or to sit at the table, we must move to that table. It's just like as kids on Thanksgiving, right? When we were kids at my grandmother's house, you had the kid table and you had the adult table. Well, eventually you want to get to that adult table. You don't want to keep eating with the kids when you're 16, 17 years old. You know, dogs eat and that's what Dion is. He's a dog and so now he's eating. So now we need to allow him to fill up his plate, bring other African-American athletes to D1 Colorado he even told the players when he talked to the Colorado players that are on the team, he said, a lot of y'all won't be here. 
these kids have to now earn their spot. You think Dion is going to, he's not worrying about race, creed, color, things of that nature. And he also said God told him to take this position. And I truly believe that Dion is a man of God. He moves on those things. And why are we, or who are we, to judge a man who is doing God's work when it comes to grooming men, especially grooming black men? Because he's grooming all races. Jackson State had white athletes, all different races of athletes as well, not just African-American athletes. With that being said, we need to stop judging people's situation and allow them to move and move in peace. You should never hate a person for improving their situation. That'd be like... Barack Obama never becoming president. What you want him to continue to work in his small office jobs and do these things in the corporation, be senator, be y'all wanted this man to never be the president. Like that's what has to happen for people to gain a seat at the table. We have to start re becoming gatekeepers of the table. And anyone who knows me, I really don't care about the whole race thing anyway. But with that being said, even when things positive happen for our race, we still find a way to complain. And what I'm going to read to you guys is I'm going to read to you guys a uh, the message from um, uh, Mr. Gary Chambers, which he said something that was very profound because he said it, you can love you can love two things. So this is what he wrote. He said two things can be true. One can one can be happy to see Deion Sanders advance his career. I believe he is special and has a capacity to do something special anywhere he goes. It just felt good to see him bringing all the black power to a black institution. He's leave, his leaving has impacts. We have to be able to have more than one perspective at the table to have an honest conversation. First, Deion Sanders can do whatever he feels is best for him and his family. Second, people can feel different about things feel different things about how it impacts others because it does. And HBCU is where Coach Prime got his degree and his head coaching job. The winningest coach in football history is from HBCU. HBCUs had a had and still have value. The question for now isn't about Coach Prime. His decision is made. It's how do we carry what was started forward. So before I read the rest, that's the biggest part that I read in there. You can be upset, you can be salty about him leaving, but how do we continue to move forward in the HBCs, right? Y'all know how many African-American ex-football players are available to become coaches in the SEC, in the SWAC? You got Michael Irvin, you got Emmett Smith, you got um, Marshawn Lynch, you got, man, the list goes on and on. You got a bunch of uh, Michael Vick. There's a bunch of black athletes. We don't have to end at prime. Or Hugh Jackson. Like, we don't have to end at these black coaches who are in the SWAT who bring the people there. But the biggest thing that we need to be more transparent about is kids only came to the SWAT because of the influence that Deion Sanders had on football. Let me say that again. Black kids only came to the SWAT because of the impact that Deion Sanders had on football. Those black kids that were top D1 athletes and D1 recruits only came to Jackson State because of Deion Sanders. And that's the talk we need to have. How do we get our African-American athletes to still want to go to a SWAC or HBCU university to pursue sports? Look at look at um, Master P. Son. He had problems with his basketball career at a HBCU. And now where is he? Playing at Louisville. So there's a lot that we can take away from these things. And then he goes on to say the deficits that HBCUs have in facilities must be addressed. We need folks who started to care because Coach Prime was there to keep caring. Those are still black students and the possibility has been made clear. I also believe Coach Prime will still help Jackson State. Look at that. So what he was saying is that Coach Prime impacted all these changes. But now we're going to see if the African-American community wants to continue these changes. It has nothing to do with Coach Prime anymore. Will you support those who you say you support regardless who's supporting them? And that's where we fail. When Barack Obama was in office, everybody was doing everything for black culture. We was worrying about black businesses, this and that. We didn't care again until the George Floyd incident. 
we continue to only be temporary supporters for permanent problems. Again, we only continue to be temporary supporters for permanent problems. It's going to take more than a coach prime to change the HBCU's legacies and, and what the, the deficits that they have when it comes to facilities, when it comes to uh, training rooms and coaches and things of that nature. It's going to be all about putting the right people in the seat. And we have to continue the momentum that Coach Prime brought to us because that's what he brought. He brought momentum. So I'm going to leave you guys with this today. I'm reading the book, Think and Grow Rich. And one of the key things to making change or becoming uh, wealthy or becoming powerful or anything, you must be persistent. We as African Americans must become persistent. Persistent. There is nothing heroic about consistency. But it does show your level of discipline and it shows that you cannot just start something, but you can follow through it. So if you're out there and you don't agree with what Coach Prime did, that's fine. That's your opinion. But what are you doing to make sure that you maintain your consistency, your persistence and your desire to make a change? I'll be looking forward for your comments. You guys have a great day. And like I like to end every video God loves you, which is most importantly, I love you, you're beautiful, your boy's out, let go.